You're um, here, why? Um, to see you to get some more money. No, I'm That's here. how it works. Yeah, That's exactly. how it works. How much would you like? <laughs> how much do you have? All of it. For you, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> When I started telling this story, it was about how my dad played for the Harlem Globetrotters for 18 years. But I found I couldn't tell his story without telling my own. I couldn't tell my own story without telling my family's. My name's Hubert Davis. We're here at Untitled Films in Toronto, Canada. Today I'm meeting with Jesse, a photographer and working on our visual treatment for Burden, which is a feature drama currently in development. It's a narrative uh, drama, but it's based on some of the documentary work that I had uh, done. A documentary called Invisible City, which took place in Regent Park over a number of years. And I was kind of influenced by that to write this script. In this community, manhood comes fairly early. When you're out there, you're expected to be a lot older than you actually are. Being weak is not an option. That shot's amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, that's like right out of the... I, I don't know where that came from, but it's stunning. It's funny, like, the idea of collaboration is just, I think, it's just finding the right people who have a similar aesthetic. That's half the battle. I think the reason that I like working with Jesse is because he's always able to bring a freshness to the images that I'm looking for. That's always the hardest thing in our industry sometimes is like, where do you find inspiration? And for me, I search for it wherever I can, whether it's through music or photography or other films. It might not be that exact piece that is going to be the, you know, in the finished film, but it gets you thinking about something else and one thing leads to another. And it's that kind of collective idea of a bunch of people being inspired and collaborating together that I think makes uh, an interesting film. I don't like things that just feel too... Staged. Yeah. Too or literal. Too yeah. literal, and yeah. the, the, photo, the image is shot the way that you expect to see a scene in a room in a sitcom. There's probably like the easy way to do it. Like you just go in and it's set up, okay, here we go. Yeah. And then there's 10 ways we can shoot this, but there's one that's more in line with what I think is... Interesting. Yeah. 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 The portrait artist, his line was like, you have something in your head and you're always striving for that, but then you never get there. That's what keeps you going on to the next one, because you're like, oh, in my head this is way better. <laughs> and, and then, so, it's the new one. Yeah, so then he like starts on another, and then he's like, oh, and he just keeps going through that process over and over again. For him, it's just, it's the process of creating it. That's what it is all about. It's inspiring because that is true, right? Like it is the process of, actually creating something that is the remarkable thing. My you know, professional life as a director has been marked by a kind of duality of two things that I do, which is uh, direct commercials, which was uh, the production house that we're at today, Untitled Films, and also uh, making documentaries and short films, uh, which I've done through the National Film Board of Canada. The Oscar nomination for my uh, first film, Hardwood, what it really helped me to do is go from where I was at that time, which was working as an editor, into branch off into just solely uh, direct projects. You know, I always wanted to direct and I always kind of had a plan of how to get there, but I think it was, it was gonna, you know, be meticulous and a little bit slower, and it just allowed me to make that leap quicker. Now, that was one thing they shut down, was a media attack, because you used to be able to come here and watch movies for free and all that, so that was part of the cutbacks. That and the receptionist, first to go. So now like when we go up, you have to call into someone to let you in. Hey, it's Hubert. We're here. Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, it was kind of cool to actually go to the NFB, come out and pull Jerry Flahive, a senior producer there, out of his meeting and hear from him. Something that's lacking often in documentary is a really high 
visual sophistication. Too often documentary to, I think, its detriment with audiences is seen as kind of a, a container for a real, like the, the actual filmmaking is kind of secondary. It's more the story, the characters, the access, they're important, they're vital issues. But, you know, the filmmaking's kind of okay. And, you know, certainly here at the film board, and I think increasingly across documentary, people are understanding that it's filmmaking. You know, you have to have a strong director. It can't just be about capturing reality. It's got to be a really strong visual storytelling, visual interpretation. And Hubert has that. So he's one of our, um, one of our great filmmakers here. And so we would take complete credit for all of his work, I think, essentially. You know, we just found him. He was just in a coffee shop and uh, we, we built him up from nothing, is what I'm trying to say. That's what we do. And then we discard, we spin him out. <laughs> That's right. And he's out on the world now, and uh, I hope he survives. Yeah, hope fending survives. for myself. Yes. Yeah, we'll give you another shot, maybe 10, 15 <laughs> years from now. What I love uh, about the NFB is just that ability and to just actually be interested in story tellers, you know, and supporting directors in those projects because it's becoming harder and harder to find. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jerry. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Jerry. Bye, Jerry. <laughs> I really do view myself as an artist and I think that inherently means like crossing new territory and trying to um, get out of your comfort zone and try to explore new tangents and things and not just kind of repeat yourself and what you've done. So that's why this project Burden is, is so, uh, so personal to me and such a passion project because I've been thinking about it for a long time and working on it and kind of uh, having images in my head of, of what it can be and it's just finally getting to the stage where I can start to see kind of an end in sight.